create more realistic skins with this Laura. Hello, my friends. How are you doing? Today, I want to show you a Laura that's trained by one of my followers, which is pretty amazing. And this helps you create more realistic skin details. So here, let's look at an example. So this is what you usually get from an AI image. And as you can see here, the skin is beautiful, but it is too perfect. It looks like a digital painting. It has no blemishes, no nothing in there. It's really nice porcelain skin and just perfect. Now here I have used the Laura. The rest of the prompt is exactly the same. The seed is the same. All of it is the same. But now if I zoom in, you will see that here now we have a little bit of blemishes. Here we have these smiling wrinkles, of course. I would say there's even some popped blood vessels in here. Things you would normally have in a face and that also create the character of the person. I also feel with this Laura, even the hair is more realistic. Also, when you look down here, for example, at the neck, again, we have here these blemishes on the skin. We have some wrinkles here that are from just living a good life and smiling and being active and going out for parties and so on. So this actually gives you a nicer result. Now, one of the downsides here is because you can't use face restore, the eyes don't look so good. But personally, I would say you can fix that within painting afterwards. Here's the very same image and I have replaced the eyes. Now, to be honest, they look a little bit digital. I could have done a better job, but I was more focused on putting this video out to you. But let's look at how this actually works and what settings I'm using. So in this video, you're going to see me use three different Loras. Now, this is for the skin and hand. Now, I have tested this mainly for skin. This is the Laura this video is about. But in the description text, and by the way, there's also here links the video about Photon from me, but uh, yeah, never mind that. There is also another Laura here that is specifically for eyes. The reason for that is because this Laura is best used without Restore Face because Restore Face is going to take away all of the advances that this Laura is adding to the image. So when you click on this link, you come here to Hugging Face and there you have this save tensor file that you can use. I did not use it in my testing. However, you will see me use another Laura. This is called Laura, and this is to create these kind of low light situations. I use it with a very soft strength just to get a bit more interesting light in there. You don't need it, but it might help you get better results. And of course, in case you're wondering, when you download these files into your automatic 1111 folder, you want to load it into the models folder and in there into the Laura folder. Then when we are inside, of automatic 1111. On the right side, you have this pink button. This opens up the section down here with your textual inversions and so on. You have here a tab for LoRa. So you want to click on this and then search through your LoRa files. And then down here, you can see you have the polyhedron skinny all LoRa. This is what we are going to use. So next, let's have a look here at the setup that I'm using to get better results. For my main prompt, I'm writing raw photo, rim lighting, two-tone light, professional photo portrait, close up of a beautiful young French woman, upper body, curly hair, summer dress, centered, park in background, highly detailed skin, full sharp with a weight of 1.2, in round brackets. And then we have the LoRa for polyhedron skinny all with a weight of only 0.3. And then we have the LoRa for the lower light with a weight of only 0.2. Now here's the reason why I'm using only 0.3. Because by doing that in my main prompt up here, I'm preparing the image to give me a better skin quality, but at the same time, I don't interfere with the output so that I still can generate the images I want to have. In my negative prompt, I'm using Bad Dream Digital Painting Painting 3D. So it is a very reduced negative prompt. Now, Bad Dream is a negative embedding. You can find it here. I will link all of that below the video. Now, this of course goes into the embeddings folder inside of your automatic 1111 folder. Now here comes the interesting part when we are going to look at the settings. 
I have here my sample method and I will show you an overview of all the sample methods and how they compare. For the sampling steps here, I'm setting 40 sampling steps, a little bit higher in this case, but you can experiment with lower settings too. I have restore phase turned off. I have high-res fix turned on. I'm using the 4x ultra sharp upscaler. Again, I'm going to link this in my video description. Now, of course, the upscaler goes into the models folder into the ESR GAN folder. I'm setting my high res steps to 20, but you can set this to zero. So it's going to use the same amount of steps that you have used to render the images or you set it to any kind of other value. I'm using a denoise strength of 0.3, so we are staying true to the image, but at the same time allow the upscaler to make changes to improve the image. I'm using an upscale of 2 for the next high-res settings I'm showing you. You have to go to Settings in Automatic 1111. On the left side, click on User Interface and then scroll down to see these two adjustments. Tick the two boxes and Restart DUI to see these special special adjustments for the high res fix. And then I use the same sampler as I have used for the image. You can use a different sampler here if you feel like a different sampler gives you better results. Now down here, I have a field where I can choose to set my prompt again. And here I'm writing the same prompt as above. But what I'm doing here differently is that I'm setting my skin LoRa to a weight of one and I'm going to remove the LoRa LoRa for the low light. Now what this does is now in the upscaling, this is using the full power of the LoRa to create the better skin. So let's look at some examples on how this method actually turns out with the different samplers. Here we have Euler A and feel free to pause the video to look more detailed on this picture. Next we have the Euler sampler, also a very nice result. Here is LMS, also nice. Here we have Hoin, also good. But here we have DPM2 and now I think we get more into nicer details of the skin. So here we have DPM2A and I feel like here you get a little bit more detail so it looks nicer. DPM++2 SA also has very nice details and here you can see they are also slightly different all of them. Here we have DPM++2M. This is one of my favorites. Here we have DPM++SDE also very nice from the details on the skin. DPM++2MSDE is my favorite here. The only thing I don't like is these peaking highlights you get on the left side in the hair but that might just be the seat when you roll a different seat or have a different scene you might not get these problems. Here we have DPM fast which is okay but it creates an error in between the eyes here on the nose ridge. There is some kind of strange fragment there. DPM adaptive is also very nice. LMS Keras has some good results there. DPM2 Keras is nice, but a little bit soft, I feel like. And also, as you can see up here, it created some error with the hair. Again, this might be only this kind of seed. DPM A Keras also creates a nice result and also nice lighting in this specific image. DPM++ 2SA Keras again is a very nice result and one of the samplers I use a lot for images. DPM++ 2M Keras is also nice but again you can see up here it has the same kind of error that we have seen before with the hair. Here we have DPM++ SDE Keras which is very nice again. And DPM++ 2M SDE Keras, also something I'm using often, especially for upscaling. Here we have DDIM, which I am surprised. It looks very nice. It has a very consistent result also. So I really enjoy that. And here we have PLMS, which I don't really use much, but I kind of like the result. And UniPC, which is often good for photorealistic results. I also like the result here, even though the lips look a little bit too digital, I feel like. Now let's go back into Automatic 1111. Here we are in InPainting. So I sent the image over to InPainting. As you can see here, I've masked out the eyes specifically. I'm reducing the prompt here to raw photo, rim light, two-tone light, professional portrait, B 
beautiful eyes. And then down here in the settings, I leave most of the settings. I change the ink paint area to only mask. For the sampler, you can choose whatever works best for you or the same sampler that you have used to generate the image. And then down here for the size, I'm setting 768 by 768 because the area is a little bit bigger because we are rendering both eyes at the same time. But you can also get away with 512 by 512. For denoise in this case, I'm setting 0.5 so that the AI has a chance to actually create new eyes, but at the same time have them fit to the face and the perspective. And here we have the result from that. It looks pretty good, even though the eyes could be more realistic. So you might want to fiddle a little bit more around with the prompt you're getting here. Let me know in the comments what you think about this LoRa or if you know a better method to get even more realistic skin. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like that and see you soon. Bye.